Hey guys, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and unique homes. In today's episode, we're gonna meet a family whose patriarch wanted out of the rat race, so he decided to start a tiny home family business. I mean, it's just given us so much more time to be together as a family. My wife and I, we see each other more now at home and at our business of taking care of these tiny houses. It's just really awesome. They're gonna take us on a tour of a few of their gorgeous tiny homes and explain why this career has completely changed their lives. And if you like videos like this, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new video. Hi, I'm Christine. I'm Isaac. And I'm Matt, and we're excited to show you Hawking Hills Tiny Houses. We currently have five tiny homes, building more. All our tiny houses are right around the same general area, within about two miles of each other, centered around Lake Logan. These are mostly for rent to tourists to the area. First was a Gladiola, that was several years back. The second tiny house we built uh, is called the Trillium. But then we came to build the third one, which is actually the Juniper. Our fourth tiny house was the Hemlock. And then our fifth tiny house, which is our newest one, is the Dogwood. Before we started this tiny house business, I worked as an engineer. You know, it was really just Christine raising five kids and me helping out when I could. And Christine always said, you know, there's the tourism business here in the Hawking Hills is getting bigger and bigger. We got to figure something out to take advantage of that and get you away from that high stress job. And by golly, this tiny house business has kind of done it for us. We've been able to do this business as a family, which has been great. Our kids have been helping us build them all. And our very first tiny house was kind of the brain plan of our oldest, Isaac. He got the trailer. We built that all as a family project and then kind of went on from there. Welcome to our Juniper tiny house. This is the third tiny house that we built. So we took some of the lessons from the first two and put it into this one. This is a 24 foot trailer, double axle, 7,500 pound each axle. Tiny house weighs about 13,000 pounds if I'm, uh, if I'm not mistaken. You can see we kind of bumped out another couple feet there on the end just to give us some more living room. The roof is a steel roof. It's relatively very easy to work with and, and assemble and get on there. One thing that uh, we think is important is to have good insulation in the ceiling, of course, in the roof, but uh, to have venting. Uh, so these uh, ridges that are cut in there allows air to come in from the front or back and move out the opposite side. If there's any uh, moisture in there, it helps to dry that out and really prevent any mold and mildew from forming. One of the features of our first three tiny houses was an arbor over the top and obviously lots of holes, so it, it's not for uh, protection from rain or all that, but um, just adds a little design feature. We like having the, the string lights on the outside. I think it adds a bit of ambiance at night. On the exterior, we use this LP panel board with LP strips. Um, I think it's real important to be sure that you, you know, we caulk all of these edges and seams and then paint over top of that and paint. Uh, on this design, we obviously have the cedar that, you know, weathers pretty well. I think, you know, the worn look is kind of what we're going for, kind of a rugged kind of look on the outside, which I think kind of works. So obviously in a tiny house, the inside space is relatively small. It's real important to have a nice outdoor space for our guests to be able to enjoy the outdoors, to have a place where you can have a great fire, place to sit around and enjoy, maybe make some s'mores. We like to provide that experience for folks. When we designed the Juniper, I wanted to have the space be bright so that it seemed clean and open. So we have the living room up a couple steps where we have storage underneath for most of our utilities. 
it still has an open feel, even though it has its own separate area. We did get our nephew to build this Live Edge bar for us. There is quite a bit of space to eat, but it doesn't take a whole lot of space from the width of the house. You can sit here in the morning eating breakfast and you have a great view out the large window looking at Lake Logan. So this is our kitchen, which takes up the majority of the space of our tiny house. We wanted to make sure that they had everything that they needed, such as a toaster oven, a microwave, and refrigerator. And we do have an induction portable range that we keep tucked away here in the steps. So if anybody wants to do any cooking, um, they can just sit this out on the countertop. A lot of the appliances, the uh, toaster oven and the microwave are tucked underneath. Um, I don't like to have the countertop seem cluttered with items. So that just helps make the space look bigger and open. Okay, let's check out the bathroom. For the bathroom, we decided to make it larger. Everybody likes a larger space to get ready. So uh, this one has a full-size vanity and a couple drawers for storage, which is nice for guests. We did uh, originally have a separate toilet, but we switched that out with a regular flush toilet and um, everybody seems to like that and it's a lot easier to clean. I enjoy that as well. Um, we've got a shower here. It's a 30 inch shower, so it's not too large, but it's not too small. It's uh, plenty of room. We do have enough room to put a bench here so that you can lay out your clothes when you're getting ready. Okay, let's go upstairs and see the bedroom. So this is our bedroom area. It's actually a loft bedroom, but if you're laying in the bed, you don't need a whole lot of space. This is actually a full-size bed. In some of our tiny houses, we have queen size. So if you're laying down, it's okay if the ceiling is too close. Um, it works out well. And due to the slope of the ceiling, if you're a little bit taller, you can sleep on this side. Laying here in bed, you can look out the side windows and have a beautiful view of the lake. So welcome to our Dogwood Tiny House. Again, a 24-foot trailer. My favorite part of this tiny house is the location. We're nestled here on a mature wooded hillside forest. To sit on this deck and you know look up, you see the trees and the leaves just sort of swaying with the wind. It's really very peaceful. Uh, you really feel at one with nature. And I think that kind of ties in even when you're inside. Uh, with that big window in there, you know, you still kind of feel like you're in nature even though you're either air conditioned or heated. The siding here is, this is the Nickel Gap Tongue and Groove Cedar. Uh, you know, we put a nice finish on it so that it's going to uh, weather well and last well. Probably every one or two years we want to put, you know, a protective coat on this cedar, but otherwise it's holding up really well. Once we had the tiny house situated where we wanted the window to look out to, uh, we realized we had a really nice space for this deck that looked into the forest. Really like the step down, it kind of makes it feel like there's two different rooms out here, I think. One for dining with the picnic table, one for sitting and sitting around a campfire and roasting. We came up with this way to put the pavers into the deck and then put the fire pit on top. I think it just looks kind of interesting. It sort of protects the deck boards from, you know, any embers that might fall out of it. So we really like this fire pit as well. Okay, come on inside. So welcome to the inside of the dogwood. It's a little bit different from our first three tiny houses. The inspiration for this design was we have a lot of cabins here in the Hawking Hills. And so we decided to do warm inside cozy cedar, but I wanted to make it still keep it modern. So we've got touches of black. There is a small table, which we didn't have in our first three. So it's kind of nice to be able to sit across from someone and play games and have dinner here. Since the bedroom is on the first floor, it still feels nice and open. Since you are 
going to be doing quite a bit more lounging on the bed. We did make the bed a little bit larger. It's a queen size bed on a raised platform with a little bit of our storage underneath. What our guests seem to like most is the seven by seven foot window on the end of the tiny house. They often say how they like to watch the deer and the raccoons and even the stars when the leaves are off the trees. One thing we had to deal with in this tiny house that was different from the others is the big seven by seven window behind me. It's something I learned from work doing uh, HVAC design glasses. Generally your worst case when it comes to heat loss in one of these things, and this is basically a whole wall of glass. So if we didn't do anything, we just had the mini split for heating, it would be pretty challenging to heat up over here, especially since our mini split sits high, the heat stays up. That's another reason we have these fans in here. To offset this window here, we put some vents flush to the floor and underneath that, there's a, uh, a strip of baseboard heat that's underneath there and it, it's on a thermostat and it heats up. It basically, heat rises up from that and offsets the downdraft from the big window. So goal being, and I think it works pretty well, is when you're sitting next to that bed, you don't feel any drafts from that window. It feels like, you know, you're still pretty comfy next to it. As opposed to some of the other tiny houses, we did put the heated floor all the way through underneath the floor. So we've got it in the kitchen and then also this bathroom as well. All right, so let's head over to the bathroom. So heading into the bathroom, we've got our take of a modern barn door with black metal and frosted glass. So it's kind of nice. It allows some of the light to shine through. The bathroom, our guests seem to really like it. It's on the larger side from our original tiny house. It's got a nice size vanity. We've got a uh, 32 by 32 inch shower here and it seems to be larger than it is as well because the ceilings are nice and tall in here. We do have um, some windows up above that allow you to look outside and have that nice open tall feel but still they're up high enough to give you a good amount of privacy. We do have a flush toilet which the guests also seem to like over the separate toilets so that's a very nice feature as well. We're currently working on tiny house number six, yet to be named. Not only having this tiny house business has it allowed us to, you know, have a little business together where we can pay our bills and all that, but it's just given us so much more time to be together as a family. My wife and I, we see each other more now at home and at our business of taking care of these tiny houses. It's just really awesome and not only that but I'm now in the deacon formation program and come back and visit me in two years and I should be an ordained deacon God willing so that's just part of our story. Thanks for watching this week's video please make sure to like share and subscribe and I will see you soon with another tiny or unique home tour.